So won't you sign me up? Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Won't you write my name? Write my name on the road. I've been changed. I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be ready, ready when Jesus comes. So won't you sign me up? Sign me up for the Good evening. My name is Mark Sign, the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. Welcome to our evening service for Sunday, August the 4th. We'll sing a few songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message that I hope will be beneficial to all of us. Here at Northfield, we sing from the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. If you have that book, I will give you the number and the name of the song. If you don't, and you have another book, or you want to Google the song to sing with us, uh, I'll give you the time as I give you the name of the song. The first song that we'll sing is an old standby, short, probably many of you know it by memory, number 83, God is so good. God is so good. <clears throat> God is so good. God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me. He cares for me, He cares for me, He cares for me. He's so good to me. I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He's so good to me. He answers prayer. He answers prayer, he answers prayer, he's so good to me. Please turn to number 161, 161, all hail the power of Jesus' name. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. 162, all hail the power of Jesus' name. <clears throat> 1, 2, and 4. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem. And crown him, Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, Lord of all. Ye chosen seed of Israel's race, ye ransom from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Oh, that with yonder sacred throng we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and praise him, Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and praise him, Lord of all. <coughs> Before the Lord.
Lord's Supper, we will sing Boundless Love, number 325. Boundless Love, 325. <clears throat> Boundless love, unending joy, this is my life, it's what I know. I can't believe that he selected me, Jesus my Lord, it's you I owe. He keeps me when I'm weary, he can hear me when I pray. He's even there beside me when I fall. His love surrounds me even when I go astray. I guess I'll have to say that he's my all. Boundless love, unending joy. This is my life, it's what I know. I can't believe that he selected me. Jesus, my Lord, it's you I love. When the world falls all around me, I call upon his name. Just in time, he takes me by the hand, whose ways are perfect, just like this son who bore my shame. I don't even have to understand boundless grace because of Calvary. His life he gave, his life outboard. I now can live with him eternally. Jesus, my Lord, it's you I love. We are instructed to gather together on the first day of the week to worship our Lord. When Paul was at Troas preaching, um, he uttered those very, very famous words of Acts chapter 20, verse 7, that say, now on the first day of the week, they gathered together to break bread. This is one of those signature verses that uh, lets us know that we are to do this every time we meet on the Lord's day. We're to gather about his table as uh, Jesus put that forth uh, the night he was betrayed when he observed Passover with his disciples. And with that, he talked about his body that he would give and the blood that he was shed. So as we gather about the table, we take these signature items, uh, the bread and the fruit of the vine that represent his body and his blood. Let's pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that in your divine wisdom, that at just the right time you sent Jesus to us. We're grateful that he was willing to go to the cross and die for our sins. We can't even imagine the the pain he suffered as he hung upon that cross nails in his hands and in his feet. Bless us as we partake of this bread and remember his body given for us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the pine. Our God, we're so blessed that Jesus was willing to shed his innocent blood. That blood which to us signifies the forgiveness of our sins. That blood poured out for many. And we just pray that as we take of this, we will bring our sins to you 
knowing that through his innocent blood, they will be forgiven. We pray this through his name. Amen. Not as a part of the Lord's Supper, but in <laughs> thinking that what Jesus gave to us when he went to the cross, we uh, think of what we ought to give back to the Lord uh, in monetary terms. Uh, it is a time when we uh, think about what we have laid by in store, of what we have been blessed with, and then with a cheerful heart, uh, give back to the Lord that uh, the funds might be utilized in such a way that uh, your word may be spread and that uh, the needy may be helped. Let's pray for the giving. Our God and Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity that we have to give back. We're so blessed to have those wonderful uh, stories in our Bible about giving. We have that wonderful story about the widow who gave her just the, what she had, all that she had. Uh, I know you don't ask us to give all that we have, but you ask us to be sacrificial and our giving should be sacrificial in nature. We just pray that those that use this fund, these funds, will use it in such a way that your word will be spread. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And if you would turn to number 23, our God, he is alive. Our God, he is alive. There is beyond the azure blue A God concealed from human sight He tinted skies with heavenly hue And framed the worlds with his great might There is a God, he is alive In him we live and we survive from the star God created man He is our God The great I am There was a long, long time ago A God whose voice the prophets heard He is a God that we should know speaks from his inspired word. There is a God, he is alive, in him we live and we survive from the star God, created man, he is our God, the great I am. Secure his life from mortal mind. God holds the germ within his hand. Though men may search, they cannot find. For God alone does understand. There is a God, he is alive. In him we live and we survive. From the star God created man. He is our God, the great I am. Our God, who sung upon a tree, a life was willing there to give, that he from sin might set man free, and evermore with him could live. There is a God, he is, a God. He is alive, he is alive. In him we live and we survive from the star God, 
created man. He is our God, the great I am. I hope all of you enjoyed our singing together. Uh, we are blessed to have that vehicle by which to praise our Lord because he is indeed worthy of our praise. I'm going to begin a Sunday evening series uh, that uh, the general uh, theme is the way of Christ, and each lesson will dovetail off uh, the way of Christ, and I hope that uh, these lessons will be beneficial to all of us, and we will be uplifted uh, by them. And so, first, as we look at this, uh, the way of Christ is first and foremost as we seek our way to God. We can only get to God through Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 6. He is the way of the Jew. He is the way of the Gentile to have access to God. The Apostle Paul wrote this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. Now, to appreciate why this is true, we have to understand uh, our, uh, our Bibles and the Holy Gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, in Acts chapter 20 and verse 24, Paul calls the gospel the grace of God. And so, uh, with that, as we begin this lesson, we understand that grace is uh, defined as goodwill, as loving kindness, as unmerited favor. And so as we examine the grace of God this evening, that grace of God in Jesus Christ, let's consider a couple of things. Number one, uh, the, the thing that we ought to consider is the need for grace the need for this goodwill for God, from God, this need of loving kindness from God, this need of unmerited, and I did say unmerited favor from God. Why do we need it? Well, Paul put it very starkly in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, where he says that all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. And we are told that we are to keep the New Testament law of Jesus Christ. We know in the Old Testament law that it was explained to the Jews that if they messed up in one part of the law, they messed up in all the law. And that's true of us today. One sin condemns. That's what James tells us in James chapter 2 and verse 10. And with that, you know, we look around us and we see people and we say, oh, that's a good person. Uh, oh, that's a good person. And even with that, even though people might look at us and say, oh, you're good. It doesn't alter the fact that we need saving. And so, Let's never make the mistake of thinking that just because people, through perhaps what we do, say that we're good, that that's what's going to save us. It doesn't alter the fact that we're not to go about doing good deeds. But understand, the good deeds are not what save us. With that, we look at uh, why Jesus went to the cross. He went to the cross because of the sins of man. And so let's look at the consequences of those sins. Again, in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, Paul says the wages of sin are death and spiritual death. Isaiah the prophet in Isaiah 59 and verse 2 separates us from God. That's what Isaiah said because of their sins. I have separated myself from them. And so with that in mind, if we stay in sin, 
we stay separated from God because God and sin cannot abide together. And so the consequences of sin are grave, both now and eternally. And so first we looked and we saw that uh, we all need this grace. Secondly, let's look at the provision of grace. In other words, in other words, why did grace fall upon us? Well, I would contend, first of all, that grace has come upon us because of God's love for us. We can all quote John 3.16, and it explains how much God uh, loved us, that because he loved us, he gave his son. He gave his son who left his right hand in heaven and came down in the form of a man. And with that, God did that fully knowing that uh, at the end of his ministry, that Jesus would give his life as a ransom for our sin. That was it was an atoning sacrifice. God is so good as we sang in the song. Why? Because he loves us and we need to love him. Second on that list of the provision of grace is that it's because of justice. God offered Jesus as the sacrificial lamb for our sins. Uh, that's what uh, John chapter 1 verse 29 uh, says to us, and so we need to understand when Jesus went to the cross, he did so to sacrifice himself for our sins. He gave Jesus as a redemption for our sins. That's what Romans chapter 3 verses 24 to 26 lets us know. And so God has done all the things that are necessary to forgive sinners, all the while being a just God. And so we have a, a, an interesting balance sheet, don't we? God is a God of love, and he's also a God of justice. And so with that, God has provided the grace that we need. Now understand, this grace is not unconditional. Otherwise, all the world would be saved. And so his grace must be received by mankind. And so with that, let's look at the third aspect of this lesson. First, the need for grace. Second, the provision of grace. And finally, the reception of grace. How in the world does a human being receive grace? And I would propose to you this evening, there is only one way, and that is by obedience to God. We must obey the gospel of our Lord. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 9 lets us know that Jesus is the author of our salvation. But there's a caveat with that. It says he's the author of our salvation only for those that obey him. And so with that, consider the end of those that do not obey him. Those that do not obey him will be separated from God. If we want scriptural reference for this, we can go to 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 17. And also to First Thessalonians, a uh, Second Thessalonians, pardon me, chapter one, verses seven to nine. And so, what is this obedience that I'm talking about? Well, to obey the gospel is to respond to God's grace. And so, the gospel message is to be obeyed. How do we do that? First, there's that faith that we have in belief. Believing 
that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. This is all through the Gospels. Jesus explains to us that he is the Christ, the Son of God. He tells us that in John chapter 8 and verse 24, and John chapter 20, verses 30 to 31. With that, we must make the good confession. We have to tell God that we believe that his son, Jesus Christ, is indeed his son. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 10, and Matthew 10, 32 to 33, explain that to us. And so we have believed in the truth of the gospel. That includes believing in Jesus Christ. And then we have confessed him as indeed the son of the true and living God. And with that in mind, we need to tell God, God, I'm sorry for what I did. Before I became a Christian, I did things that were ungodly. I sinned. And now what I wish to do, I wish to repent of those sins. Repentance is a, as sometimes look at it as a, a concept, but repentance is more than a concept. It is a part of our belief. It is a part of our obedience. And so in Luke chapter 24, verses 46 and 47, chapter 3, verse 19, and chapter 17, verses 30 to 31, it all talks about repentance, of telling God that we're sorry for what we did and we don't want to do it anymore. And finally, becomes the last step in the reception of grace. We have to receive uh, God into our hearts through Jesus Christ by being baptized for the remission of our sins. This is what uh, Jesus said when he left the earth and what we come to know as the Great Commission in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. He said, go preach the word to all the world, baptizing them. Those that will believe will be saved and those that don't will be condemned. And so in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, when Peter preached that great first sermon, we had people asking what they must do to be saved. And Peter explained to them, you must be baptized for the remission of your sins. Now, that's the beginning. That's how grace comes to us. But see, baptism is just the start. Such obedience does not earn our salvation. Baptism involves the mercy and the grace of God, Titus 3, 4 to 7. Baptism unites us with Christ in his death, Romans 6, 3 through 8. Baptism must be God working in us every day of our lives. Baptism is an appeal to good conscience. First Peter chapter three and verse 21. And finally, through baptism, we put the Lord Jesus Christ on ourself. And so by obeying the gospel, we receive the initial benefits of God's grace, the remission of sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit and the promise of eternal life. And with that, as we finish the lesson this evening, we must not only obey the gospel, we have to live the gospel. To continue to receive God's grace, we have to live the gospel of Jesus Christ each day of our life. The gift of eternal life is promised at the end of a godly life where we live the gospel in our lives. 
That's what Romans chapter 6 verses 22 to 23 tells us. That's what the words of Jesus tell us in Matthew 25 and 46. Unfortunately, people can receive the gospel and become hard-hearted. Very much like Pharaoh was hard-hearted with the children of Israel and he had to go through all of those plagues before finally he acquiesced. And so it's, it's possible to be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. If we want that crown of life, if we want eternal life, we have to maintain our faithfulness to Jesus Christ from baptism unto death. To, to live that, we need to grow into it. We need to grow into the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We have those wonderful words in Second Peter uh, chapter uh, 1, verses 2 to 4, where he talks about growing in knowledge of Christ and adding to your knowledge. Uh, if we go on in verses 5 through 11, it, it involves adding Christ-like qualities to our life. With that, the grace of God keeps pouring itself into us. Otherwise, we may fall from that steadfastness. And so, by following Christ in faith and obedience, we can continue to experience the grace of God in our life. And so, let's review this lesson. The way of Christ and the only way, and the only thing that we're dealing with tonight is that the way of the Christ, of Christ is the way to God. He sent his son to deal with the problem of sin. He sacrificed his son to show us his love and his justice. And rejecting the gospel of Christ rejects both the father and the son. The, the way to Christ doesn't stop with believing Jesus into baptism. It's by living the gospel. It's by doing what Jesus taught his apostles. It's by growth. We have to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. How do we do that? We do that by remaining faithful to him, even to the point of death. And so this is a perfect spot for me to offer the invitation to you. See, the last part of this lesson is how we receive the grace and we receive the grace through the be obedience of the gospel. And so with that, we all need to believe that the gospel is the truth of God's word. We need to accept that and then we need to take Jesus Christ's name and confess it and confess that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. We need to let God know that we're sorry for what we did and we don't want to do those things anymore and be baptized for the remission of our sins. This is how we get to God. We get to God. It is the way of Christ and it's the only way to get to God and to be in God and to receive eternal life forever. If you haven't taken those steps, we are available to you so that you can uh, come uh, to the Lord. If you need to do it right now, get in touch with one of us and we will be there to help you. Let's close with a prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful as we think of the way uh, of Christ and that the way of Christ is indeed the way to God. We want to get to God. We want you, God, to be a part of our lives. And we know that you can only be a part of our lives through your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to always be submissive to the will uh, that Jesus demonstrated to us. Help us to desire to have Christ-like attributes in our life. Help us to live the gospel. Help us so that your grace will be 
continue to be poured down upon us. Continue to be with us because you are the God of love and the God of justice. And you are also the God of comfort. Continue to be with us and bless us. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please, all of you, be safe. And may God bless you all. So won't you sign me up? Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Won't you write my name? Write my name.